Today, these friends are here gathered to help study for finals. However, some of their group members are late. So Max, Max, Max. Sorry, guys, I'm late. Oh my god. No, I'm sorry, there was traffic. But did you guys hear about this one article that was posted today? Did you hear about what happened to the Armenians during the Armenian genocide? The we are. We, didn't, we, we know that didn't actually happen. Dude, that's only a myth. Wait, what's the Armenian genocide? What are you guys How, haven't you guys heard about? Haven't you guys seen the facts? The Armenian genocide did happen. Oh. It happened. No, no, it it happened. It happened. I heard you guys were talking about the Armenian genocide. Yes. Yes, and. Um. Well, I I, I found this disc right here. I mean, uh, it, it's a documentary on the Armenian genocide. So I thought you guys would be interested in watching. Thank it, you, know. you. It happened. No. It did it? Yes, it, it did. did. No, have you not it seen our government? Let's let's have the documentary tell us, okay? Let's listen to the documentary. Maybe. This documentary will shine light on what the Armenian genocide was, what happened, and how it impacted and impacts the world today. Today, we're going to talk about what the Armenian genocide was, what happened, and how it impacted and impacts the world today. The Armenian Genocide took place in the Ottoman Empire and with surrounding areas. A group called the Committee of Union and Progress, CUP, more commonly known as the Young Turks, was the political party in power at the time, orchestrated methods to systematically wipe out the Armenians, one of the few remaining Christian minorities living in the Ottoman Empire. Members of the CUP felt threatened by Armenian nationalists during World War I when the Ottoman Empire was on the verge of collapse. The Armenians tended to be better educated and wealthier than their Turkish neighbors. Who in turn tended to resent their success. The Turks also then became suspicious that the Christian Armenians would be more loyal to Christian governments, such as Russia's government, where some Armenian communities were located, than they would be to the Ottoman Empire and government. This hostility between the Armenians and Turks was formed long ago, as even in the condition of deprivation, Armenians of the Ottoman Empire provided unprecedented social culture, and economic development. The genocide was a means to suppress this ascent, as well as to seize the Armenian wealth created during decades. World War I gave the Young Turks the opportunity to Turkify the Ottoman Empire, holding a secret meeting in 1911 in Thessaloniki. The plan was to Turkify the Muslims and to exterminate the Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire. Talat Pasha, Interior Minister, Enver Pasha, Minister of Military Affairs, Dijamal Pasha, Commander of the Palestinian Front, and others were among the orchestrators of the project. Although the Young Turks planned the Armenian Genocide in 1911, they waited to find a suitable opportunity to implement the genocide, which happened to be World War I. The Ottoman government maintained a propaganda campaign to be able to change the public opinion of the Armenians to ultimately have the Armenian Genocide to be implemented without any major public backlash. This propaganda was spread throughout through word of mouth by sermons, mullahs, and town criers who said Armenians were traitors, spies, and conspirators. On the night of April 24th, 1915, the Young Turks executed an assassination of the elite Armenians. Several hundred doctors, 
lawyers, politicians, government officials, teachers, writers, poets, and other intellectuals who could become the core of a future resistance were arrested overnight and executed within 72 hours. This was the first phase of the Armenian Genocide. The second phase of the Armenian Genocide was when 60,000 Armenian men conscripted into the Ottoman army. were disarmed and murdered by fellow Turkish soldiers. The general population was also disarmed and were denied by privileges of having weapons. Hundreds of thousands of women Children and elderly people were then exiled and deported to the desert of Syria. A lot of them were murdered by Turkish soldiers and a lot of them also died from diseases, starvation, and dehydration. Ordinary Armenians were turned out of their homes and sent on death marches through the desert without food or water. Frequently, the marchers were stripped naked and forced to walk under the scorching hot sun until they dropped dead. People who stopped to rest were shot. In all, the Armenian Genocide wiped out at least 75% of all Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire by the time the genocide ended in 1923 with there being 1.5 million estimated deaths resulting from the Armenian Genocide. In today's world, it is taught to the Turkish students that the Armenian Genocide did not happen and it was only a myth. We know that didn't actually happen. Dude, that's only a myth. The Turkish government outright denies that the Armenian Genocide even happened in the first place and tell other world powers that it didn't really happen. <laughs> Çünkü Türkiye'nin böyle bir vebali, böyle bir suçu asla kabul etmesi mümkün değildir. As other countries are close allies with Turkey, such as the United States, they are also reluctant to admit that the Armenian genocide occurred in attempts to maintain good relationships with the Ottoman Empire. Of today's estimate, 9 million Armenians in the world, only about 3 million live in Armenia. As you can see, the Armenian Genocide was a very important, grueling, and cruel event, as well as being the first genocide to occur in the 20th century. Through spread of knowledge of the Armenian Genocide, more countries and people will come to accept the Armenian Genocide to have happened in the future, and it will never be forgotten. Oh, we were doing that?